As an entrepreneur, if you feel like you're running on empty, it's going to have a really horrible payoff in your business. And today, I've brought a special guest on that's going to reveal some very interesting pieces to really fueling yourself up and getting powerful. Hi, it's Melanie Benson Strick, and I'm America's leading small business optimizer. And this weekly series is designed to optimize you. You know, I want you, the small business owner, the entrepreneur, the passionate visionary, whatever you think you are, whatever you want to be, we've got to power you up from the inside out. And optimizing your marketing and your business is just one dimension of what it takes to have a sustainable and profitable business. I want you to have that slight edge that allows you to put the energy in the right places at the right time. And I can't imagine a more, you know, just a really fun, powerful, and very insightful guest to join us in the, the inner game part today. Who, who is that? Where, who, who would I bring on for that? I want to share with you a really dear friend of mine, someone I have known for a really long time, Kim Castle. She's the creator and host of Kim TV and the star of the upcoming reality series, Aging Ungracefully. Uh, she's a fresh voice for today's new breed of feminine leadership, and I would even say a spark and a catalyst for many of us to really follow our brilliance and our passion and to not be afraid to go where the evolution is taking us. Now, you know, one of the funny little uh, factoids about Kim is she's a former stand-up comedian, a TV host, a writer, and an award-winning art director, as well as a branding expert and special someone who has really had a huge impact in a lot of entrepreneurs brands over the last 10, maybe even 15 years now. And I could go on and on and on about her. She's got a million credentials, which we'll share on the, the show page. But the bottom line about Kim is Kim's not afraid to go to places that she needs to go and that you need to go in order to experience extraordinary well-being and what I would consider real fulfillment. And I think that's missing for a lot of us. Wouldn't you agree, Kim? Absolutely. There's no there's no separation between well-being and fulfillment. And I think the trap, we think we work harder and we'll get fulfilled. And we mm. forget that we leave our well-being way at the, the start line. Yeah, exactly. And, and you, you and I over the years, over a glass of wine, over a glass of tea, or a cup of tea. Over, over tears. Over <laughs> tears, over beachside walks, you know, you name it. We've had just, you know, deep, provocative conversation about this. And we've watched each other evolve and grow and shift and, you know, fall apart and fall together. And, you know, it's just such a wonderful journey. And get and, back up. And get back up. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> And I, you know, I, I'm really just so, I'm, I've just really loved watching this last evolution of Kim. So I want to talk a little bit about it today for two reasons. One, what you are doing with Kim TV is so much fun and so powerful and so enlightening for a lot of people. And we're going to talk a little bit about why you chose to go this direction. But I also want to dig into what I think is a very um, tantalizing and yet somewhat scary place that many entrepreneurs go as they evolve and grow in their business. So we're going to we're going to tackle it all in 30 minutes or less. <laughs> Sounds great. All I right. talk fast. Oh good, me too. <laughs> I was just accused of that the other day. Melanie talks too fast. I'm like, "What?" Okay. <laughs> I was told that I talk fast, but it's a good thing cuz my brain keeps up with it. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So, you know, you were a branding expert forever. 20, over tw almost 25 years. Yeah, and you had your hands in a lot of really big brands that have evolved uh, from entrepreneurs all the way up into big companies. But you recently made a shift. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about how Kim TV came to life. Like, what, what was it that you learned about that made Kim TV so important to get out there in the world? Oh, God, there were so many factors. Yeah. You know, there's so many factors. One, I, I had to get really honest with myself about the business that I had created, Brand You, in terms of my, my own fulfillment, you know, I, I, and, you know, the traps that I was hiding in. Like, for example, with Brand You, I kept on, I built into the marketing. It's not Brand Us, it's Brand You. I, I built into the, the hiding, you know, so I kept on <laughs> hiding behind my own client's success, thinking that my value was in how much I did for them. And became, in a sense, a, a form of a martyr. We don't realize that happens in us. So I started to pay attention to that. Um, I also, sorry, my headset's falling out. I also 
also always wanted to help people in a bigger sense. It wasn't just about business. It was really about uh, how do we live? Mm -hmm. And so for me, doing Brand You and helping people in their business was a way to be in power. But it was only a part of what I knew that I was bringing to, to the world, what, you know, what I was called to do. And so and I would hear that voice inside of me and I'd go, shh, not yet, not yet, not yet. I'm not ready yet. And I continue to hide. Um, another thing that happened was I plum got exhausted. I... I would keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going and I would like walk into a room as a speaker, take an emotional read of the room, deadlift, and then get back to my hotel room or my car and I'd sob mm -hmm. because I had nothing left. And I went, uh, this is not a sustainable way to live. <laughs> I'm not doing this for the long term. <laughs> uh, hello, no matter how many people I've helped and how many millions they've made because of it, it wasn't helping me. So I had to get really honest. And it's, it wasn't an easy thing to come face to face with, you know, the decision to leave your own business, a business that you had created with your partner and your husband, to say, you know what, I'm just not here anymore. Yeah. And you, you doubt yourself. You doubt, does that mean everything that I did before was invalid? Uh, you get so identified with the role that you had created that you don't know who you are anymore. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting, Kim TV, we, I did, made the decision, got on a plane, I had for Brand You, got on the plane the next day to go to Cancun for two solid weeks of what we call YouTube boot camp, where we bought cameras and lights to our, our villa in, um, in Cancun, and it looked like we were shooting a porno. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I, I had to get back to myself. And I remember one day, the first day we were on camera, one of the first days we were on camera, just like four or five hours, just talking nothing to get used to being me again. I had a breakdown and I'm sobbing and I'm going, I want to be like her. And I'm referring to the video I had just done the day before of the role that I had perfected over it. <laughs> and it took me a while to get back to me and what I'm really about. And that's really what Kim TV and everything, the brand that I'm building was, I got to a point where I didn't want to teach people how to brand anymore. I wanted to show them. Hmm. I thought it was far more powerful to show people how to build an, a brand in today's environment because brand has changed in the 20 plus years that I've done it. Yeah, that is true. It's, it's, it's like, and, and, you know, there's so much shifting and growing that's happening in the internet world and in the world of marketing and then in each of yeah. us. And, you know, you actually picked a subject that you focus on a lot in Kim TV on the wellness side and particularly with gluten free. And of course, that catches my eye because I, you know, you and I have had these conversations about gluten free, sugar free, dairy free. And, you know, what we've noticed a big part of our energy, at least for me, and I think, I think you and I talked about this is, you know, what we eat is having such a huge impact on our energy, our mood. You know, yeah. as women in particular, you know, our hormones change as we get up in age. I won't say how old, but <laughs> we'll just say there's a certain age range. <laughs> that We're still we... dancing on the hill. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> on that side of the hill and moving to the other side, you know, just there's a lot that's going on. And, and I think there's a lot of a lack of awareness yeah. of how all these things play in. So tell us a little bit about how you decided to bring and what you're talking about with free. Sure. Sure. Yeah. When I when I made the switch to do Kim T you know, TV and return basically back to entertainment and media, which is where I had been even prior to uh, being in brand development or alongside brand development, I had been a, a writer and an actor and a stand-up comedian. So performing, I had been performing since I was a, a child. And so when I made the decision to return, I had no idea what I was going to talk about because I didn't want to do it with my head. I didn't want to like like muscle something because that's what I had been doing. Yeah, through. that's the driver energy that's in the us that, you and know, figure awesome. it out, make it happen. And from a brand standpoint, you pick a, you pick a concept and you muscle to make it happen mm -hmm. in both form and in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And I went, we're not in that time anymore. It is really more of a, a collaborative co coming together a brand today. So I wanted to really let allow spirit whatever to guide me and to do something that I'd be doing for the rest of my life. Um, at the same time, I realized how sick I had gotten. Mm -hmm. I had really, because I'm a, a type A++, plus plus, 
I kept going and going and going, and I literally got so sick that I got one day that I couldn't get out of bed. I was so depressed, and I hid it. I considered suicide. Um, I just, I just wasn't anymore. And still, I didn't acknowledge that something was wrong. I just like it's one of those things you fall, even no matter how long you're down. If you have that kind of driving personality, you go wait. I, I'll be up in a moment, and you get, up and you get I just, up. And I just need to, I just need to rest for a day, and then I'll just, be back. Exactly. Well, got really, really bad, and found out that I was my hormones were way out of whack. I was I had adrenal fatigue, chronic fatigue, no more serotonin, like really low serotonin, low thyroid, low everything. Amazing that I was still walking. So. That was factoring in, and it made me realize I thought I was healthy. I knew I was aware. I had, I was, I ate gluten free four or five years ago because it was the diet, you know. So I was, I was healthy in theory, but not in reality. And it got me thinking, like, okay, what does it really mean to be healthy, and what does well being really mean? And it made me realize that until we understand what's really happening in our body, we can never truly be happy, or not happy, well, uh, healthy. Happiness is one of the components that, that changes everything. Um, but I, it's like you think you're healthy, but food affects it, your thoughts affect it, your emotions affect it, your energy levels, your what you say to yourself, everything affects it. And that was... Everything changed for me when I went, all right, what is my real job in the world as a woman? I realized that my number one job was my well-being, and everything else came second. And so I decided to build the entire brand and the message around that. Yeah. And you know what I love about it is not only is it entertaining, but it also is really bringing um, information to people that help them understand where maybe they're falling down or why their power isn't where they need it to be or what's going on in their bodies and, you know, how to really lighten up in a lot of different ways. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, in particular, I, I love one of the things that you do that is so cool and I've had the benefit of um, tasting and enjoying some of these little treats is when you share your recipes and, mm. you know, because gluten, you know, Gluten free. I think you know most of us have an ability to get around dairy and sugar, but when you start going gluten free, you're like, oh, what my treats? Oh, but this and that. And yeah. so you know, in the just just to tantalize everybody a little bit, what would you say is one of your favorite gluten free recipes that that you've mm. uncovered so far? Oh, there's my favorite. Okay, so the blondies, the gluten free blondies are okay. spectacular. Okay. Um, the salted caramel. Do blondies pump- have peanut butter in them? No. Okay, they then do. I got to try those. Okay, oh, you know what? I, um, it's the uh, salted caramel pumpkin cheesecake. That's that's gluten free and <gasps> sugar free. That was amazing. Yeah. Um, and then I do a sixty second chocolate cake. Is there a microwave involved in that? Yes. There okay. Is a I was going to say, how do we do sixty <laughs> second chocolate cake? There's got to be a it microwave. It is so. You know, I, I remember when I discovered it, it was like this is even faster than an easy bake oven. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> And it, I swear when you try it, and you can eat it, eat it on HCG, even phase two diet, no peanut butter wow. unless you want to add peanut butter. Um, and you, you're eating this and you're going, oh, my God, it is so satisfying. And you feel it's, it's that, you know, this thing when we eat treats and there's, we know we shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. So we're eating it and we're trying to satisfy ourselves, but we're feeding ourselves like this is bad, this is bad, this is yeah. bad. So you're kind of getting a double whammy. I think we can eat treats and feel good and say that and know that it's good for you. And actually, you're not just eating the food. You're eating the emotions around it. So, um, yeah, I think you should be able to eat your cake and feel good and fit in your skinny jeans. Love it. Skinny jeans. Yes. <laughs> so can we just maybe take on this gluten-free or the, you know, kind of getting your energy balanced? Maybe let's take gluten-free up the table for a second because it isn't always about the gluten. Um, it's, a, it's an important thing because as our hormones go, you know, like start to wane and our energy levels go, we start to get, we, st- we don't realize it, but we start to get depressed mm-hmm. and we, our serotonin gets low. So we start to crave carbohydrates, mm-hmm. both for, our, also as women, our testosterone starts draining, especially if you're type A, it pulls from your adrenal glands. I know 
about that. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens is we start craving carbohydrates and we think it's for the energy, but no, it's actually for the serotonin. Uh-huh. So it actually, you're, you're, we're trying to feel good again through the carbohydrates and it becomes this kind of a, a sick cycle. Yeah. So no, food is, a, a, the treats are an important thing. Well, you know, and I, I discovered this in my own journey. Um, I don't think we, we ever talked about this, but I found this out as I was in my discovery around what was pulling my thyroid out of balance because I was having the same thing. I was depressed. I, my energy was really low. I couldn't really get in motion. And I'm, I'm like, that's not me. You know, I'm like, I, I'm pretty like, okay, I've got a goal I'm going for it. And I just couldn't get the, the energy up. And um, what I found out was that every time you eat gluten, if your thyroid is out of whack, it actually pulls your thyroid down. So it's mm-hmm. like there's the little um, enzymes in gluten that literally attack the thyroid and, and bring it out of balance. And, and so then I thought, well, every time I was tempted to have a piece of bread, I'm like, okay, so my thyroid's going to be whacked for six weeks. <laughs> am I willing to do this? Like, am I yeah. going to really do this to myself? And I think part of this, I, I look at this as a lifestyle change. Like, am I willing to upgrade my lifestyle to experience the level of health, well-being, vitality, and energy that I know I need to be the kind of leader Absolutely. my business and my work needs me to be? And it, so it becomes a choice of who do I need to be to experience and create the life that I say I want. Yeah, and being happy. I mean, for me, I think it's truly being happy. And for me, I love treats. I'm a, mm-hmm. one of those, like, I put stevia in my water. I'm a, like a hummingbird. I, you know, I, I need, I've like, done I, that one. <laughs> I, need, I need the sweetness of life. Yeah. And so to me, removing the treats didn't seem like an option. It felt like I was being, I was like punishing myself. Mm-hmm. So being able to enjoy the same, I, I, I'll get an idea like, oh, I want beignets. Yeah. And I'll search and research different recipes that I will figure out the best recipes to make gluten-free, sugar-free beignets. So it it starts with that commitment. And it's not just who do I need to be to show up in my business and help people. It's who do I need to be to enjoy my life. Yeah. So here's one of the big things that I hear from people about making a lifestyle change like this, especially entrepreneurs who have been in the busy, I've got way too much on my plate, I'm moving all the time, I Mm -hmm. I can barely squeeze in three meals as it is. And then we, we introduce this of, okay, now you've got to change the way you eat, and uh, you're probably not going to be able to buy a lot of this stuff at the store. We've just, you know, in their mind, made it more complex. Mm-hmm. What is some guidance you would give somebody to really maybe simplifying or making it accessible in this, this sure. upgrade well, of your lifestyle? Well, the first thing I would say is it's, you're going to have to give up some time from your business and what you're doing and give that to yourself. The first, that was the hardest thing for me. It's like I have no no time and all my creativity, all my energy was taken up yeah. by my business and my clients and what I was creating it was nonstop that literally I had no space for myself. I would do something on the way to the bathroom. And <laughs> come on, you know what I'm talking about. It's a about. visual. <laughs> I gotta get no. Gotta get the visual out. I thought, oh my god, I didn't drink my water. I'm drinking while I'm going to the bathroom. I mean, come on. (laughs) And so I think the thing, one of the big shifts was to realize that I, I didn't have to fill everything up all the time. And as women, we forget that our power is in our space. Mm -hmm. So some of that space had to be with. I had to switch it and take my creativity of some away from what I was creating in my business to creating food and creating a sense of well-being body again. So to me, that's the first thing is you have to, you have to remove that idea of, oh, I have no more time. No, you have all the time in the world. You're choosing to put all your time into this. And you're not going to be around if you're not to serve those people if you don't put some of that time into yourself. So that was the first thing. Second, something happened, and I don't know where it is, that I, I started, I used to be very excited about looking at magazines and online for clothes and shoes and all that kind of, now I do it with food. <laughs> like I just started getting excited, like by pictures, and I went, oh my God, that looks amazing, and it just started to pay attention in my body. Like, oh, my God, that brings me joy. And so start following that joy and allow that joy in. When that started to happen, I went, 
okay, so I can eat that pretty picture that's filled with crap that I know is going to make me feel bad, or I can find a way creatively to make that healthy. Mm-hmm. And then I saw <laughs> both. So those are a couple tricks or tips. Yeah, and, you know, one of the things that, that for me is just, like, have a game plan. You know, what, when I mess up, it's because I don't, I'm not following the game plan or I'm, I don't have a game plan and I'm hungry, right? And so when you're hungry, you just kind of go for the default or you go for what's easy. And so, you know, like when we have had meals together, you know, you hosted this beautiful dinner one time and, and you know, you have a game plan. Like, how am I going to stick to the plan? What works? You know, how do, how do I, um, you know, what do I need to buy in advance so I can execute yeah. on this? And I think really, you know, especially since I work at home, it's easier, but you really, you got to commit and then execute. Choice. Yeah, you make it. Now, I found that I, I, I'm one of those kind of people that I, I know about myself, one of those kind of obsessive, compulsive kind of, I didn't know this about myself. What? But <laughs> like, like, why take three, one spin, spinning class when I can take three? I mean, like, I'm just, hello, wake up, adrenal fatigue. Why just um, eat gluten-free? Let's make my whole life about gluten-free and my business, too. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, no, I found that. So I had a tendency to over, like if I'd pick a diet, I'd like like force myself, like like I'd over discipline. So I found that even that doing that caused stress and took adrenals. It it was like I I had to kind of lose, I had to loosen up a bit. (laughs) Yeah. And so I had to make a choice and I had to really, rather than from a game plan standpoint, which felt very male and very more of in a box, I had to make a choice in, inwardly, mm-hmm. about how I wanted to be, how I wanted to support myself and, and flow from there. So it was, so I can allow more of an, an a feminine approach to my life as opposed to more of the discipline. So for me, it was more of make a choice, be passionate about things, find that joy in the things and allow that to kind of be that hunter, you know, the gatherer kind of enjoyment of life rather than. Got it. So if there was one piece of advice you could give someone who's feeling pulled, like they've had, maybe they've had this business for years and years and years, and they, there's something inside them they know, oh, I feel like I'm supposed to go in this new direction, or this isn't fulfilling for me anymore, or this is wiping me out, and, and maybe they don't even know what it is that it's supposed to look like, but they know it's not this. If you could give them one piece of advice that would help them just really accept, and, and maybe like feel empowered by their situation. Listen. Hmm, okay. Listen, and don't put it off. I tell you, honestly, I started Brand You 10 years ago. Or how many? 11, 12, 100 times. Time. What's time? It, all, it feels like 100. A million years ago. A million years ago, I'm really getting the anti-aging thing down. <laughs> I'm watching that show. (laughs) Um, I knew back then that it wasn't something that I was going to be doing for the rest of my life. But I put myself on hold. And that ate me up Mm -hmm. for so many years. And, you know, you're hearing that voice for a reason. It's your spirit, your soul, your you are talking to yourself. And, and imagine if you were a child or it, like like you, you take that that other voice inside of you and it's this child. Would you say, don't listen to that, just do what you're told, do what you're doing? No, you would foster it. So listen, if, if there's anything I could have, I mean, I'm happy for the path that I took. I mean, I've learned so many things, but I just, I, I think back to me that I I pushed aside and how much, how, that, that was an incredible person that I, inside of me that I didn't listen to for so many years and coming out dancing now, but like all that lost time, just don't, don't lose time. Yeah. Say so yes, even if you don't know what it, it means or what it looks like, just trust that something's ready to emerge. And, you know, I always tell people this is where a coach can really, you know, support you. Not a business coach per se, but someone who's really committed to helping you get what that voice is trying to tell you and, and allow it to emerge. So um, and, just the, and allow the feelings to inform you. Yeah. Um, I, I view from, I, that was a great book that I wrote, oh, Daniel Laporte's book, yeah. uh, uh, Desire Map. Yeah. 
Did you? And, and I, I haven't was, read it, but I hear so many great so things about amazing. it. So amazing from a feminine approach to goal setting. Mm-hmm. Using, you know, as a type A, we think that we're trying to get someplace and we're going to be happy. We, we, we connect our worth with how much we accomplish and our happiness with what we, have, what we achieve thing. And she just flipped it. And it was beautiful where you're really getting, you're, you're defining the feelings, the feelings that you want first. And then you make decisions from that. Mm-hmm. Not, oh, I'll, when I get there, I'll have that, that feeling of happiness and that chocolate cake. <laughs> then <laughs> it's, it's now. What do I want to feel now? And then using that to go, yep, this makes me, this stays in line. No, this doesn't. So feelings. So that, um, you know, there's one thing I always like to ask my guests, and that is there a special mantra quote that keeps you inspired and engaged. And I just love what you're talking about with Daniel Laporte and that that feeling map. You know, she calls it the desire map. And, you know, one of the things that I, I learned in coaching school and I've used the entire time in my coaching, but never really, you know, I, I, I kind of lost my way with it was how do I want to feel? Yeah. And as a powerful woman and a driver and, and, you know, I think anybody who's kind of got that type A, sometimes we just focus on what do I need to do? We don't yep. remember how do I want to feel. So I love that as kind of a, a, a way to stay connected. How do I want to feel when I get there? Not necessarily, you know, what to get me. So your turn. What's how a favorite mantra feel quote? Now? Well, actually, you know, it's it, having had the awareness and everything that I talk about on Kim TV is, and, and really this this brand using media into the marketplace is all about anti-aging and well-being. You know, really, aging and gracefully is all about, like, laughing at that type A personality and where it can take you. Um, and you watch the journey of me coming back to, to, to life. Um, and in that, so here it is that I used my power, my will to, you know, drive me into the ground. I get help. I make a business around it, and I started to find myself doing the same thing. (laughs) Patterns tend to work no matter what place you're in. (laughs) Exactly. So, yeah, I'm taking all these great bioidenticals, and I've got a great doctor and a great team to support my well-being. And if I don't change what's going on in here, I'll be in the same place. So I thought, okay, if in order to truly shift the paradigm for women on the planet, and how we show up and are in our real power, I needed to do that first and foremost. So I made a switch. I woke up rather than what do I have to do today and not even what do I want to feel when I get there. My number one job when I, the first thing I wake up is what do I need to do right now to support my Mm well-being? My number one job is my well-being. Second, what do I need to do right now to be happy? Happy. Not, I'll be happy here, happy now. Like, like, and I, like, I was always a delirious happy. Like, I'd like cover things like, I'm happy, I'm happy, get it. <laughs> no, inside, what do I need to be happy? And I make sure before I do anything in the day, my well-being, my happiness is covered. Everything else is second. I love that. You know, I think it takes a lot of courage to uh, own this. And, and to make this kind of a shift in who we're being and the way we operate, because you know, spiritual we get into practice, the, well, for sure. Yeah, I mean, a spiritual practice is a big part of it, but we can have a spiritual practice and still stay unconscious. Absolutely. You know, I know a lot of spiritually unconscious people. Absolutely. Yeah, we do, don't we? <laughs> and, and I've been a spiritually unconscious person, I, and I think that you know, owning the deepest place of who you're meant to be on this planet to do the work that not only makes you feel alive and, and brings you that spark, but also is the biggest gift you could give. Like your branding is great. You, you know, you do beautiful work, but this, this is stuff that, that transforms lives. And I just feel uh, so excited for you that, that you stepped up into this. And guys, I can't tell you enough how fun and informational and powerful and, you know, interesting Kim TV is. I, I highly recommend that you tune in. And you can get it at Kim TV, but you can also sign in via YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. If you just go to, it's, it's easiest. You can just type in Kim Castle or Kim TV on YouTube. But the easiest way to go there is KimCastle.tv. Okay. It'll take you right to the YouTube. 
Great, yeah, and it's it's well worth you know tuning into it. I, I've I don't catch subscribe. every episode, but I do I do subscribe and I do like I'll go in and I'll watch and and there's a really funny episode Kim was telling me about about um, when you are interviewing people on the street. So go look for those interview on the streets about gluten. Yeah, they're called street questions. Street so questions. Do a street okay. question. I got one on hormones or gluten free, and um, yeah, really, I'm building a talk show using YouTube. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. And, and you know, there's so much involved in this. It's a, it's a whole business in itself. And I love that you realize that, you know, you've got to be this new person in this new business and <laughs> not bring the old Kim to the new business. Absolutely. absolutely. And the cool thing is now I'm not having to drive everything. Yeah. I, I know my, my piece and I may allow other people. I had to let go of control and all, you know, all those other lovely trappings. Well, and I allow other people to do the stuff that's needed. And that's a key part of optimizing any business you're in is like do the thing you do well, be the person, you know, own the role and oh. then let others own their role in supporting you. And, you know, I think that's a huge breakthrough for a lot of people getting that, you know, if I'm going to optimize my business and I'm going to optimize me, it starts by letting go of everything that doesn't feed you and give you energy and give you life and that you're just not good at. You know, Absolutely. you don't have to do it all. You know, the moment I made this change things started happening without me having to talk about optimization. True optimization is when things are happening without much effort. Mm -hmm. And I found that it's so completely opposite when I said everything else is extra. You know, once I had my well-being and my happiness, like every day it's my part, like think that first. Everything else is happening optimally. It's happening. I'm getting brand deal. I'm mean, getting deals and development deals and things that are happening that I thought I had to bust my ass to get. And it's like, no. You be clear on where you're heading. Put your well-being and your happiness first, and you'll be guided along. Yep. And allow other people to do their stuff. Yep. And it requires a lot of detachment, and it's very powerful when you really let that process happen in your life. So Kim, yeah. thanks for being here today and sharing your journey, sharing, you know, some really valuable tips around, you know, finding that energy and that power. And most importantly, just really sharing what it's like to go through this evolution and, and mm -hmm. how to land on top again. You know, yeah. I think a lot of people are scared they won't. So there's hope. Don't give up. Work listen. the process, listen, and just surrender to what's evolving. There's something really beautiful on the other side. So all right, everybody, love to hear your comments on the show page today. What, you know, was there a spark for you, something that really popped? And, uh, hey, go check out Kim TV, KimCastle.tv, right? Yes, and subscribe. I really yes. need uh, I need our kind to of subscribe. I know we don't yeah. hang out on YouTube, but we got to show that we count there. Yeah, and, you know, there's, a, there's something really powerful about being part of a tribe and a community and a conversation like this. You know, we're, we're, uh, we're making transformation happen by, by bonding together. So let's support Kim. All right, everybody, see you next week. Bye-bye.